Hello for another Dr. Spotfire quick tip video. Remember when I talk about how to create cascading or related dropdowns on my previous quick tip videos? Well, someone requested from the audience if it was possible to search within the dropdown values similar to those that you see in the search box filter. Well, I am Jose Leveguer from Spotfire and I will show you that yes, it is possible how to create that with your property controls, make it searchable with the help or empowering the, the, the search box filter from the filter panel. The analytics form 2023 is going to be held September 19 to 21st. Four general sessions, 20 breakout sessions, more than eight customer speakers and 24 hour hackathon. It's going to be included free training, free spot for the final training. And this event is completely free. So make sure you subscribe. The link is down below. OK, so I have here my Analysis with a list of stores. I have more than 1,000 stores. These dropdowns only can only hold 1,000. I cannot search the dropdown, but I can leverage the um, power of this search box filter and make it look this dropdown that is searchable by clicking on this button. And now this dropdown it appears to be a searchable. Now I can make my my uh, search and make my selection, and then on the map it's updated the location of that store. I can change this input to something else. It can be a label. It can be an input field. Like for example, this case, I have a, an input. It works the same way, same thing. I can close the filter and that's how it works. I can do it with multiple filters. And one of the things about the filters is that I can drill down from the beginning or from the left, just like a regular filter panel. I can reset my filters and I can do the drill down, make my selections. And one, once I have my selection, I say, okay, this is what I want and the selection is made. Now I can also do that for labels. So this is a use case where you want a label and maybe you have a mask head and you have to, you want to make selections. You don't want to take all that space that the filters with, with put and you just want to make a simple selection. Then I can just click on this label, uh, reset my filters, make a couple of selections here. Uh, and then when I click OK, it's going to list those stores. If I make more than one store, then uh, I'm sorry, if I make more than uh, five store selections, then it's going to tell me that there are five stores selected. Behind the scenes, I'm going to edit my text area and then I am going to remove this uh, JavaScript. The JavaScript is only going to toggle between the filter that I put there and my drop down. And then I have a bunch of controls. Let me just remove the, the filter so you have a better visibility of what controls are uh, are here. And uh, I have uh, my dropdown, in this case is this one. Then I have uh, the filter that is going to show or hide. Then I have a little placeholder, this X, I can change it with whatever I want. That's going to close the filter. And I also have this other symbol that represents these three dots to, to open the filter. And finally, I have a calculated value that is going to help me transfer the selection from this filter to my input control. Now, this filter is driven by a special filtering scheme. So you have to create a filtering scheme for that, only for that purpose, only to populate or to show the filters that you want. And this is the one that I use. Make sure you don't uh, have this selected because then your visualizations are gonna react for that and maybe you don't want that. So this is only for the purpose of driving the, the property controls. You can also change the filter types. That's not a problem because it's just showing and hiding. So let's uh, let me go to the filtering scheme that I talked about and let's change, for example, the region. Maybe I want a radio button. So when I open it, it's going to show me the radio button along with the filters. And, and, and that's basically how it works. The step by step instructions are here in the typical community. Just go to the typical community and search for filter property controls and you will see step by step on how it's required to do these different examples. So you will need this structure, this HTML, and then you will replace your um, Spotify controls in red with the, prop with the appropriate controls. Then you have the script that is going to toggle the visibility between the filters and your uh, controls. And here's the step-by-step -step procedure, how to create a filter scheme and whatnot. And then if you have this other example where you have multiple list box filters for one single dropdown, then you can create this. Uh, it's a minimal changes. You have to uh, replace the HTML, add as many filters as you want here, and then uh, update the JavaScript. And in addition, you will need this Iron Python script that is going to be responsible to reset the, the, the filter. And this is represented by this icon right here. 
And finally, we have one more example, which is the multi-selection label. And that's going to be something like this. When you click the label, you have this filter, you can make uh, multiple selections, you can search and keep making the selections. And, and finally, when you make the selection, you say, that, okay, there are eight stores selected, you can reset the filters. And the calculated value for that is here, in this case, when I have less than or more than five uh, stores selected, it's going to show me only the number with concatenating the string that there are eight store selects or whatever. That's it. And thank you for all your feedback, all your support. If you have any ideas, I encourage you to go to the ideas portal where you will have an opportunity to submit for new Dr. Spotfire live sessions or quick tips, templates, examples, white papers, or if you have a visualization mod idea, you can also do that. Or if you want to make improvements, uh, suggest some improvements for the Spotfire, you can do so as well. Check out the ideas, both for the ideas that you like and see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, have a nice day.